Welcome to Plant Medicine Transmissions with Javier Regueiro. A week ago, a friend and client asked me if I could speak about dietas. And uh, it's a good timing because uh, this week my new book called The Toe Datura Diaries, A Shamanic Apprenticeship in the Heart of the Amazon Jungle, has just been released on Amazon in a Kindle format. The Audible format uh, should be coming out soon, whereas uh, the print version will come out at the end of September. So why is this a good timing? Because the subtitle of my book, A Shamanic Apprenticeship, actually entails not a series of teachings on how to be a plant medicine person, but actually consists mostly on dietas. Dieta is the term that is used in the Amazon jungle, referring to this process, which is pretty much the same for both personal healing and for apprenticing, for learning about how to use shamanic plants and all plants. Before going into greater detail about this process, I would like to point out the difference between a plant shamanic dieta and the preparatory diet when we are about to engage with plant medicines such as ayahuasca and San Pedro and the diet that is observed after the plant medicine experience. A preparatory diet that is often also referred to as dieta, is actually about not having any hot chili foods, abstaining from fermented foods in the case of ayahuasca, and abstaining from pork products and pork meat, as well as alcohol, all mind-altering substances and uh, sexual activities of any kind with others or oneself. This is a wonderful way to prepare both physically and mentally for the ceremony ahead. And observing this diet after the ceremony is a wonderful way to support the integration of that experience. Personally, for a single ceremony, I like to observe that diet for at least three days before the ceremony and three days after. In the case of a particularly important ceremony, I'd like to extend it to five days before and after. And it is up to the person to decide and stick to whatever guidelines they feel it's important for them to observe in this process. The preparatory diet does not, in my opinion, necessarily include the abstinence from salt and sugar. This is part of a plant shamanic diet. In a plant shamanic diet, there is a full abstinence from the items that I've mentioned before, but also of salt and sugar and all spices. Abstaining from salt and sugar before a single ceremony is not really necessary. One can do it, but I find that abstaining from salt 
particularly when we are not in a retreat setting, when we are going about our lives, can be rather weakening to our system and may actually be detrimental to the experience of a single ceremony. The same can be said when we are about to engage in a plant dieta. If we already arrive at the dieta not having had any salt or sugar for however long, we may arrive already weakened. I'm going to speak about the abstinence from salt in a dieta process. The abstinence from salt is a very important part of a plant shamanic dieta because the lack of salt makes it so that we are no longer capable of retaining water. Therefore, what happens in a dieta is we are flushing out of our physical system all our waters and we replenish them with fresh water. This is a very powerful cleansing process because so much toxicity is stored in our water. Our waters also carry the vibration of emotional and mental upsets. Therefore, abstaining from water cleanses us of this as well. Abstinence from salt, from spices, is also part of a cleansing diets that are suggested in the case of treating an illness. Particularly, it's become quite popular in the case of cancer because of all the benefits that such abstinence provides. Very important also, and I've mentioned this in an older episode of this podcast, is a media diet. In preparation of both a single ceremony or a dieta process, we ingest more images, stories, news, then we actually ingest foods nowadays. So in order to quiet our inner space and prepare it for these experiences, I strongly encourage people to get on a simple media diet. Just being mindful of what we take in and uh, limit somewhat the access particularly to social media and online media. That diet, that media diet, is also very good and beneficial after we've had our experience with plant medicines. So now that I've explained a little bit the difference between a preparatory and post-ceremony diet and the dieta requirements, I'm going to talk a little bit more about a dieta process. My apprenticeship with Don Francisco Montes Xunia, my teacher in Iquitos, has actually consisted exclusively of dietas with different plants. Those dietas happened at his healing center where I would stay in my own hut and spend as much time as possible on my own. When I first started doing these dietas, I would take every opportunity to go and visit other people in the center who were in the same process And with each dieta, I spent less and less time socializing. And the quality of my dietas have only improved. So much so that my last dieta, which happened in May of 2019, 
I actually asked my teacher for a private dieta for the very first time. I entered the jungle for this dieta for myself. And I know that it's easy for me to start taking care of other people and offering my support. But it was very important for me to not do that and not even take part in the ceremonies offered by Don Francisco to all the other guests. And instead, I had uh, three ceremonies just one-on-one with him. Now, that's not really a requirement, but it felt very important to me this time around because last year, my dieta was once again after 14 years, a dieta with the toe plant. Toe is the name in the Amazon jungle, the most common name, referring to the plant Brugmansia suaviolens, which is part of the Brumansia family, which is a relative of the Datura plant that is native of Europe and other parts of the world. I consider the Toe plant my main teacher along this path of plant medicine because my apprenticeship in 2005-2006 actually consisted of dieting with this plant for four months, followed by one last month of dieting the tobacco and ayahuasca plants to ground me again after the process with the toe. And I had not dieted this plant since that time. So for me, it was a very important process, a very important meeting with this plant. The dieta process is a meeting, is a relationship with the plant that we diet. Engaging in this relationship means that we give this relationship as much time and as much of our attention as possible. Therefore, traditionally, a dieta process is engaged in complete solitude. In various healing centers that have sprung up in the last 20 years, we no longer need to cook our own food. And by the way, one should not be in the vicinity of fire, and exposed to direct sunlight while in a dieta process. And uh, food is delivered to our individual huts without having to either cook it or seeing other people at meal times. What is important to be aware of is that the dieta process has certain requirements However, these requirements vary from tradition to tradition and from healing center to healing center. What is important is to adhere to the rules of the place where we engage in this process without exception. The dieta process is the most powerful process, spiritual process and healing process that I have engaged in in this lifetime. And trust me, I have engaged in many. The process is so powerful that adhering to the rules is of utmost importance. I have witnessed people breaking the rules and suffering greatly from breaking those rules. In my book, The Toe Datura Diaries, there is also an episode about me breaking the rule of abstinence from sex. And in my case, the repercussions were light. It was a warning. But I have seen people 
breaking that rule with disastrous consequences. And particularly disastrous is the engaging in a romantic and erotic relationship with our guide, with the plant medicine person who is overseeing the dieta. The dieta process is so powerful that in the best of cases, we want to engage in this process in a place that is not too crowded. Many years ago, my teacher had his center full of people dieting. There were like 15 people, 15 of us, and he literally did not have the time and the energy to support each one of us. In my case, I was hitting very, very important, traumatic experiences and scenarios and did not feel properly supported. So much so that I ended up leaving the center after four weeks when I had actually intended to stay there for a couple of months. And that process, that healing process that had started with this dieta only completed itself two years later. So I recommend people to choose a smaller group, a smaller center with a maximum of 10 guests at a time if we want to receive the support that may be needed. Now, it's important also to be aware that in the jungle, that kind of psychological support is often lacking. So before signing up for a big adventure, a big dieta, it's a good idea to meet with the person that may be guiding us through it and see whether this person actually is capable and willing to offer that support and not just bring us our medicine every few days and lead us through a ceremony. I have met people who in a dieta process experienced a resurfacing of traumatic experiences and of their shadow about which they were completely unaware and it took them a really long time to land on their feet again after such a experience while on the dieta. Last year when I was dieting the toe again, I was in an altered state for two months after the end of my dieta. I was in an altered state energetically, physically, as I was processing everything that had happened during the dieta. It was a very challenging experience for me because of its novelty. I never experienced anything quite like it. And I could only thank my, so to speak, level of maturity because I was able to take care of myself during those two challenging months taking care of myself, addressing my needs, and making sure that I would ground my energy every day, which was very needed. Once a day, I had to lay on the grass in my garden for at least an hour to ground uh, that energy. The toy plant is definitely not a plant for beginners, quite the opposite. But even if we diet a different plant, not as powerful as the toe, we should be open for any possible consequences of that dieta. So it's a good idea to be ready for anything 
and also give ourselves plenty of time after a dieta to process the experience and integrate it. I used to be pretty thick when I first started engaging in this process. And most plants that I have dieted over the years, I have dieted them for at least three to four weeks. In my opinion, a dieta process which is engaging in this relationship with a plant energy, a plant spirit, is not something that is easily achieved in five to seven days. I prefer for myself a minimum of three weeks of being with one plant. And also, I encourage people not to accept the invitation of dieting several plants at the same time. Unless you are very sensitive and very aware, dieting several plants at the same time may actually create confusion into our own inner landscape. So my recommendation is to sign up for longer processes. And at the same time, I also recommend that you don't engage in this dieta process for too long. I have myself suffered from engaging for too long in this process with consequences to my digestive system. And I don't recommend to anybody that is not native of the jungle and used already to a fairly poor diet to engage in this process for more than three months at a time. Plant medicine people and healing centers offer all kinds of programs, varying from just a handful of days to an open-ended process. And it is up to us to manage our process, first of all, by choosing a process that feels ideal and by staying aware of our physical health, of our emotional and mental health. Oftentimes, we risk staying on just because we have signed up for something and no refunds are available. This is an exercise in remaining connected with ourselves and honoring our needs and not just our desires. Plant dietas are so fascinating that, just like in my case, we may end up engaging with this process for longer than uh, recommended. And it's important to offer us and our physical bodies and our spirit enough time to recuperate and to integrate our experience. Without integration, this process is useless. So take it easy. Blessings.